on game businesses, or in parentheses, gamification. Uh, my name's David Farris. Um, I'm a, a freelance web developer, uh, amateur game developer, and uh, I work a lot with the gaming scene up in North Dallas, Plano, Frisco area, um, and run a coffee club actually for game developers called the Video Game Open Coffee Club. Uh, we get together, chat about gaming, game development, gamification, these kind of issues, um, and just have an open discussion. Uh, if you guys are interested in that, we're actually hosting a downtown version on Thursday at uh, 9 a.m. over at Surge Books, which is, uh, it's in that co-work 400 North Herve space. Um, I would recommend coming out. It'll be a, a really cool uh, discussion just about what's happening in the gaming world uh, this week, this month, this year, um, and interesting topics. Um, so yeah, come out for that. So basically, just so you guys know, um, initially this was uh, planned to be like a presentation with slides and everything like that. Um, and uh, I, I am a, an eternal procrastinator. Um, and so I, uh, I actually don't have any slides prepared. Uh, but, but what I want to do is I, I want to give you guys a little bit of uh, background on gamification, what it's all about, uh, some common misconceptions, uh, and some ways that it's kind of being used today. Um, and then open it up for discussion, open it up for questions um, and input. So uh, feel free if you guys, I mean, I'll, again, I'll definitely project. Let me know in the back if you can't hear me and I'll talk louder. Um, and, but feel free to mix and mingle, whatever. And then we do have some mics up here if you guys have questions. Um, maybe our, uh, our assistant volunteer over here can help with that. So. Um, so basically, for all of you that are here, uh, I'm guessing you're here because you're interested in how gaming can be used uh, for either your business or for other businesses. You have an interest in gaming in some way, or you're possibly game developers. Um, so basically, game, uh, gamification, uh, as it's commonly known, is kind of a, uh, uh, a term that goes well in some communities and is vehemently hated in other communities. So in the business community, people look at gamification, which by the way, gamification is taking aspects of play of gaming uh, and adding it into normal everyday processes or into normal business uh, applications, uh, ways that you run the business. So in the business community, people look at gamification as this really cool new thing that's coming out that's an engaging way to reach new customers, incentivize repeat behaviors, uh, and continue bringing customers back in uh, on a regular basis, hopefully increasing profits, incre increasing revenue, everything like that. Because of that, the gaming scene uh, itself, game developers and people that are intimately connected to video games or gaming in general, board games, look at gamification as this, this cheap knockoff of what they grew up with, what they love, what they develop on a regular basis. Um, and so a lot of times, if you talk to a gamer or a game developer and you mention gamification, they're like, oh, that's like reward systems, badges, achievements, that's all that it is, and that's all that people ever use it for. And that, that's kind of true. If you, if you think of gamification, most people think of adding badges to, uh, to an app so that every time you use it, you get a little badge that says, good job, you've used this app 10 days in a row. We're proud of you, right? And, and it doesn't have any sort of intrinsic motivation uh, and definitely doesn't have any extrinsic rewards that you get. It's just like, here's a badge. Um, but that doesn't mean that badges and achievements are a bad way to incentivize users. Because if, if you are a gamer, how many of you in here play games in any way, shape, or form? Whether it's video games, board games, uh, play around with your kids outside, anything like that. Yeah, so I would say probably everyone. Kind of a rhetorical question. But, um, but so the idea is, is that if, if you play games, they're, they're, you interact with badge systems and achievements on a regular basis. Um, has anyone here heard of the app Duolingo? Um, I use it to learn French and touch up my Spanish and different languages. It's kind of a cool little app. I'd recommend it for anybody that wants to learn a new language. But they actually use a, a badge and achievement system along with other gaming elements to make an immersive experience 
and something that's actually engaging and something I want to go back to on a regular basis that doesn't feel cheap, doesn't feel like I'm, I'm being tricked into using this product. Um, and so that's where badges and achievements can be a really good, uh, really good way to incentivize people. Uh, if you play video games at all, uh, Xbox Live has achievements and people go for the highest gamer score and, and see how high is my score. Somebody hit a million yesterday and I'm at 500,000, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep booking until I hit that a million. And it's, it's a way that people are incentivized to continue playing games that maybe they would normally set down, but there's just that one goal. We're, we're very goal-oriented people. Uh, we, we like checklists, we like setting up goals for ourselves, and when we accomplish something, it, it really gives us great motivation for that. Um, and so, so again, goals and achievements can, can be really well used, but if, if that's all that someone's adding to an app or, or a business in general, it again can feel cheap because there's no other aspects of that. So, um, so how can you add other aspects of gaming or, or other, um, other implementations to make your app or your business or anything like that interesting in a way that's engaging with your audience but doesn't cheapen that experience. So um, from the app perspective, uh, we've talked about badges and achievements, um, but one thing here, let me give you a little bit of background. Um, so uh, in gaming, there's classically there's what's called Bartle's Taxonomy, which is four types of gamers, four types of uh, classification for gamer. And, and a lot of people fall into many different categories, uh, but overall you might see certain things that you pull towards. So there's the socializer, which is somebody that plays games for the interaction with other people and for the, for the camaraderie and community that's built into gaming. Um, there's the achievers who are there for the badges, who are there for the, look, I, well, look what I just accomplished. Uh, there are the explorers, which are there because they want to learn about a new space. They want to be immersed in a new world and, and they want to explore their surroundings and what they're doing. They're the people that load up World of Warcraft and they don't go actually do any missions or quests. They instead just walk around the map battling monsters and, and kind of enjoying the landscape as they walk around. Um, and then last but not least, there's the, the killer, right? The people who are in it for the, the glory of, of being at the top of that list of, of, of the leaderboard and, and the, the glory and fame that comes with being amazing at gaming. Um, so that's, that's the different types of gamers that you, can, that you can see while you're playing games. But think about it from an app perspective. If, if you have an app that has badges and achievements, you're, you are touching on the achiever uh, side of, of a gamer. You're, you're playing to that, but you're missing out on the, the socializer or on the explorer or on the killer side. Um, and so there are opportunities where, say, um, even Uber to some degree has, uh, has gaming aspects to the way that they they do their ride sharing service. Whether whether you are the um, are the driver who is driving around and uh, trying to pick up people, even the review system to some degree um, is is a way that that not only do people leave feedback for you, but as a driver, you might be looking for that five star or that four and a half star review from people, so you interact with the world, you interact with people that you're driving with in a different way. You don't treat them like crap, you don't swear at them or, or yell at them because you, you still want to be seen as this, this great person. And, and if somebody has that five-star rating and they've driven a hundred different people around and they have a five-star rating, they hold that up and say like, look, I'm amazing, I have five stars. Um, so that's, that's from the app side. But if, if any of you in here know me or will get to know me after this, you'll find out that I love coffee. Um, I, I love all the different coffee shops around the area, checking them out, finding out about the space. And I find that whenever I go into a coffee shop, you find different atmospheres wherever you go. There are places that appeal to that, that socializer aspect of you go there and you know you're going to run into 20 people that you know and, and 
catch up with them and and shoot. Uh, I don't want to swear, but but basically basically interact and have fun. Um, and other coffee shops where they have punch cards that allow you to get punches for every drink that you buy, and after ten punches, you get a free drink. That plays to the achiever, the collector in me. Uh, and and the the killer, not not a whole lot of coffee shops uh, cater to the killer, but but I would say that there are a lot of opportunities, right? What about uh, customer of the month type of somebody that comes in on a regular basis, uh, drinks a lot of coffee, interacts with a lot of the baristas, and and is kind of known around the coffee shop. What if you take a picture of them and put them up on the board as like customer of the month, this person that, that we love or share on, share on Instagram, uh, different, different things like that. That can be a really good way to interact with that. And without spending any extra money, you don't have to offer rewards to offer an engaging experience. What if you went to a coffee shop and every, maybe, maybe you go to this coffee shop once a month and every time that you go, you sit down, you have your cup of coffee, maybe you pull out your computer and work on something. But every time that you go, you notice that off in the corner, there's a cupboard. And that cupboard has a door that's slightly ajar. And you've noticed it there every single time you come in. And so finally, you, you kind of work up the courage, or you, or you work up the idea, maybe I want to go open up that cupboard and just see what's inside. I've always wondered. And you open it up, and hey, there's, there's a book inside. And so you pick up the book, and you open up the book, and there's a recipe for a secret menu item, a secret drink that that isn't listed anywhere, but is this exciting? It's the the lavender love latte that, you know, you you. Uh, of course, they can make it any time, and and you as a coffee shop owner or you as a as a coffee connoisseur could could order it any time you want. But but by finding it and finding these secret little hidden things around the the coffee shop, you might continue going back, and you'll tell your friends. You'll be like, man, I was at uh, I was at stupid good coffee, uh, up up at 1910 Pacific and I was I was sitting around and I noticed they had a beanbag chair and sitting on the beanbag chair was was some like little coin and I, I picked it up and took it to the front desk and they were like congratulations you just won our our explorer for the month badge <laughs> or or explorer for the month achievement and and we're going to give you uh, a free cup of coffee or something like that so so it's a way to engage and and hit on these different levels without really adding much. You don't even need a technology background or to build in these crazy technology apps into your business in order to add aspects of gaming. So um, I, I probably missed a whole lot of stuff uh, as I was kind of talking through some of that. Um, but oh, one, one thing that I'll point out. So, so that's, that's something that could be done in the future and that I haven't really noticed much around. There, there are aspects here and there that, that retail stores and restaurants and coffee shops and, and whatever the like have done to create gaming aspects to their business. Um, but there, there's a lot that could be done in the future. But one of the areas that a lot of people are actually doing gamification and doing it well is in the education space. Um, so one thing that has always, it's, it's always been a struggle for schools and teachers and educators is making school and making learning not seem like a chore, not seem like something that, that you have to do and you have to do well or, or else you get punished, you get penalized. Um, the whole grading system that we have set up in, in this country is based off of 100% is where you start, and every time you get graded, you, you get knocked down from that 100%, that A+. Plus. What if instead, and this is what actually some teachers are actually doing a really good job of. I apologize, sorry. What if um, you could have an additive point system? So you start off, everyone starts off at level zero. And when you walk into the class, you start at level zero. When you work on things in class, when you do well, when you uh, work through problems, whether you do amazingly or you still need some help, you gain experience points. And you unlock different levels and different tiers as you progress through the class. As you unlock those levels, as you unlock those tiers, you get skills that are associated with 
doing well in math. You, you now have access to a, a special program on the graphing calculator that the teacher is going to teach you and show you so that you can now have it stored in your calculator that will automatically do the uh, quadratic formula for you uh, because you unlocked it because you already showed that you understood what you were doing and you had enough points that you leveled up. And, th and that's something that actually some schools are, are doing right now. But again, it could, it could be utilized in, in an even larger sense. Um, so that's, that's education is, is starting to see that there's a need for it and there's, there's an opportunity um, and really improving upon that. Um, one other person who's, who's really big in the gamification scene and known very well uh, is a woman named Jane McGonigal. And uh, she has a book uh, called uh, Jane McGonnell, I think, or is it McGonigal? I always forget, I'm sorry. Um, but she has a book called Reality is Broken, and she actually just released another uh, book recently. But uh, she's all about, uh, she was sick for, for a long time and in the hospital for weeks on end. Um, and one of the things that she did to try and get herself through it and, and not settle into this crippling depression or this, this sorry for yourself attitude was she turned her recovery into a game for herself. So sometimes she, she would set up her own little achievements and badges that she had to get through throughout the day. So if she sat up and was able to sit up and stay seated for a couple minutes and then a couple hours or anything like that and have those conversations, she'd gain experience points and she'd level up and progress through the day and unlock badges for herself. And this was, this was all made by herself for herself. Um, but it really helped her. And, and she, um, she says that that was actually what got her through the sickness and through the hospitalization that she had because she had something to look forward to. She had goals, she had achievements that she wanted to move forward to and, and unlock. So, um, so she's, she's doing some really cool stuff. Just released a, um, a, an app called Super Better which is, it's kind of like a, a task rabbit, but you can download it on your phones today if you want. And basically you put in goals or you put in things that you really want to see happen. So I want to lose five pounds by the end of summer. Well, in order to lose five pounds, you have to work on stuff and you have to have incremental goals. And Super Better helps you to set up those types of things. Or maybe I want to drink more water during the day because I know that I get dehydrated or I, I don't do a good job. And, and this app, Super Better, uh, does a really good job of making it easy to uh, set up these systems and work through it. There's also another app called Habit RPG, which is, it's actually a crowd sourced uh, app that's being developed by um, people all over the US, but there's actually a couple developers in Denton and a couple here in North Dallas that are working on this. And again, it's this, it's this thing of you put in to-dos for yourself, but they're, they're quests and their achievements. And then as you work through them and as you unlock them, you, it helps you progress. And, and it actually helped me to become more productive as, as a developer, as a person, just because I'm somebody who, again, procrastination, there's no slides up because I didn't, I didn't put it in my habit RPG to, to, to make this presentation. So, um, so that's kind of an uh, overview and a little bit of a history, but I know that there's probably questions and there's probably things that I skimmed over or I didn't elaborate on enough. And so uh, we have two microphones here. Um, and uh, we have two volunteers. Is there any way if somebody is looking, the microphones won't reach all the way to the back, um, but if you guys are close enough to the front, uh, we can bring you a microphone and you can ask questions. So anybody have questions? Anybody have comments? Think that I'm full of crap and there's, there's nothing to what I'm saying? Yeah, please. So um, uh, I, I'm always looking for ways to opt. Is this Okay, good. I'm always looking for ways to optimize uh, process and operations. So you have done a survey. So what's, what's the best project management tool with gamification features that uh, you've come across so far? Or have you? And you um, mentioned a couple that were for kind of personal. Yeah, so I mean, I think that project management systems actually do a, 
a good job, but there, there's, there's ways that they could be improved. Uh, things like even 17 hats or base camp or like free versions, Podio, uh, those kinds of systems, um, they, they include aspects of gamification, whether it's um, little completion badges for, for creating things here and there. I haven't, I personally haven't used a whole lot of project management systems that, that utilize that. Uh, one thing that I think would be really cool, and I'm actually starting to build out for myself. So I'm a web developer. I work with startups and small businesses to, to build out websites. And one of the biggest issues and problems that I have is getting the information that I need in order to move forward on development. So whether that's a, a logo or that's content for your about page or it's, it's some complicated technical piece that I need to put in and, and I need that information before I can even start. And so one thing that I'm working on is creating a system that through the use of progress bars and badges and achievements and all of that fun stuff creates an incentive and makes it fun to do the work that I need you to do. Um, and so I haven't currently seen any systems that, that work on that aspect. Um, there, there are, shoot, I can't, for, I can't remember the name and I should have had some of these prepared, but there's, there's a couple companies out there that have done it from a, an intranet perspective of, hey, we target has a huge uh, amount of employees and they have an intranet between themselves that plays very much to the socializer aspect as well as to the killer uh, raise me up, I'm the, I'm the leaderboard type of aspect uh, because you vote on and rank when people are doing well so you give them points or you give them little brownie points for doing well or for helping you out with a project here or there, and then those points can be redeemed down the road for other incentives. There's, there's a design firm in Frisco, forgetting the name, but they actually have a system like that where whenever you ask a graphic designer to help you tweak this one little thing, you can give them points back. And I mean, it takes millions of points to do, but you can actually get like a Kawasaki uh, motorcycle from this system as a reward. Now again, you have to be a part of this company for a long time and you have to work on this, but it's a way that they've, they've built in a reward system. Again, it's not perfect because if you and I are best friends, we're just going to give each other points back and forth and boost ourselves, but not actually boost the rest of everyone. And so as, as a, what I, what I would say is as, as somebody either developing technology or working with developers to develop systems for your business, come at it from a perspective of game design because you, you, have, to, you have to think about everything that goes into it. So often we say, oh, I want to add badges or I want to add something simple to my website and then we don't really think through why. Why is it that we're doing this? What incentive? is there and and how does it how does it add value to to our customers or to our employees or to what we're doing um and and so you walk a fine line but um yeah hopefully that answered your question i can repeat your question if you just tell me what it is yeah Um, so the question was at the, the meetup that we do every Thursday morning in downtown Plano, 8 a.m., <laughs> Video Game Coffee Club, do we talk about this kind of stuff, gamification, uh, how to add gaming aspects to business, that kind of stuff? Um, not as much to the day-to-day -day business because a lot of the people there are either, again, active gamers or game developers. We don't, I, I would love to see more entrepreneurs and more people in the business space come out and be a part of that because I think that we could really dive into some of these really interesting topics of gamification, but mostly when we talk about it, we talk about how gamification has gone wrong or how we would improve gaming aspects of certain things. So that makes me think of, uh, Recently, maybe four or five months ago, uh, China 
actually started introducing a game into their entire economy ecosystem. It's a, it's a government-led game um, that basically gamifies relationships and gamifies who you interact with. So you are given rewards and given points for being actively patriotic on social media and, and going out and about to help your fellow man. But it's all mandated by the government, and it's all decided upon to say, well, you're doing a really good job, so we're going to give you points. You're not doing a good job, so we're actually not going to give you points, or we're going to detract points from you. But the scary part of it, to, to, to one degree, great, that's awesome. If, if you are a leader of the Republican Party or the Democratic Party, of course you want to make it exciting and engaging to share political stories and to talk about what you're doing and, and maybe even incentivize people to be an active participant in the political process. But the scary thing about what's happening in China is, one, there's this system. Right now it's opt-in, but it's supposed to be mandated by the year 2020. Um, so in less than five years, they're looking to make this a mandatory thing that everyone has to be a part of. Um, but they actually, they knock you down points and they penalize you for who is in your friend group. So if you have people, it's scary, but if you, if you have people who are a part of your, your network that are actively dissident or actively not participating the way that the government wants them to, they get detracted, but you actually get detracted points for having them be a part of your system. So then it incentivizes people to kick them out and to not be friends with them, not be contacted, not be connected with them, uh, and, and really puts down on that whole free speech idea or anything like that. Um, if you guys are interested, uh, the, the game is called Sesame Credit. Um, there's a really good uh, video on, on YouTube uh, by this, this channel called Extra Credits. Uh, they do, it's kind of a cartoonized uh, video, but it's really well done. They do their research, they talk to all these points, and they have a really good video on Sesame Credit and the, the scary dangers of propaganda games and, and how when they have real world... Yeah, if somebody makes a pro-US military shooter game like Call of Duty, great, whatever. If it's, it is what it is. But when it starts having an actual impact on your daily life and on how, like a credit score, what you can get for loans, what kind of jobs you can get, anything like that, it becomes really scary. So um, yeah, Hope, I didn't mean to scare you all, but, but cool. Any other questions, comments? Yeah. Oh, sorry, second question. Okay, so, so the question was about eSports. So if, if you don't know what eSports are, uh, eSports is taking video gaming and professional video gaming and turning it into a professional sport. So people get paid to play video games by big backers um, and, and sponsored to go and participate in Call of Duty tournaments and uh, League of Legends and Dota right now uh, well, just recently, uh, there's this game called Dota 2, um, and they, they were actually featured on ESPN2. The national finals were, uh, were shown on national TV and everything like that. Um, and so we, we do talk about esports. We talk about how, um, how the esports scene is continuing to grow, and with the popularity of things like Twitch.tv, uh, which is a, an online streaming platform, uh, gamers who are interested in making gaming a business for themselves and making a living off of gaming are able to get sponsorships and find teams and show themselves off. Um, from a gamification perspective, um, there's, a, there's a company actually in Frisco called PVP Live. 
um, that is taking um, taking the the ESPN model for uh, for esports and adding in statistics and and all of that kind of stuff. Currently, um, they don't have a lot of uh, gaming aspects outside of of the statistics and the leaderboards and everything like that. But the the interesting thing for for esports is that um, to create an active participation outside of just someone sitting back and watching, um, that's where the engagement, that's where the gamification comes. Uh, Twitch and streaming platforms have used chat features and, and used interactive elements to try and add some gaming, but they haven't really gone maybe that next step of, of adding in those explorer elements or now if you if you search and you check out different streams uh, it's beneficial to you as a player or as a as a watcher because you find out about new people that you may never have found out about before um, but I don't know if they're making a huge push per se um, to do anything groundbreaking from a gamification perspective but I think it'll be really interesting to see uh, there's a there's a game that was announced last year or a year and a half ago called Upsilon Circuit. Um, and by the way, uh, when, I, when I get a, a recording of this, I'll make sure that I'll go through and find all of the things that I talked about and link back to them in the description of this on AllCal. Um, so just kind of watch that. I'll, there should be an update, right, if you're following it, saying, hey, there's, there's been an update to the description. But I'll, I'll add links to these videos and the things that I've talked about. But Upsilon Circuit is a game that, um, that only, I think, 16 people can play at one time. And there's only one game instance happening. So in the entire world, there are 16 people playing this game at one point in time. But it's streamed live via Twitch or, or Ustream or any other streaming platforms out there. Um, but the caveat is, is that if you die, that's it. You get one life in the game and that's it. So if you die, then the next person comes in and gets to start playing. So think of this, I like to think of it almost as like the Hunger Games for, for video games. Because it's this thing that if done, if done well and, and successful, it will become this event that people will watch and tune in for because it's the only the only time that that you can do this and watching live has this this benefit over watching something else because you can see who's playing and 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 who dies and and who gets put in but on top of that the way that they're monetizing it's going to be a free game that anyone can play but the way that they're monetizing it is by adding a gaming element of the spectators can pay to have an effect on the game. So if you have a favorite, uh, a favorite player, you can drop goodies and bonuses for them in the game to help them along the way. And if you don't like someone, you can drop hazards in their way, or you can try and actively get them out and knock them out of the game. Um, so I think it's, it's really cool, and it's really interesting to see where that's going to happen. It's still in development at this moment. Um, but hopefully within the next year, maybe two years at most, um, it should come out and, and have more information. So Upsilon Circuit is what it's called. Um, I would check it out. It's going to be really cool. So what's our time look like really quickly? Um, so if, if you guys, 5, 10, 10? OK. Um, so yeah, if you guys are interested in finding out more about this, one way to connect with me uh, is through um, the website vgocc.com. It stands for the Video Game Open Coffee Club. That's the, the meetup that I do every Thursday. Um, we're going to start posting on a more regular basis about these types of interesting stories and what we're talking about on a regular basis, um, as well as there's contact information on there. Um, another thing, I do this thing called Coffee with David, where anybody that's interested in, I love coffee, right? Anybody that's interested in grabbing coffee and just chatting, uh, let me get to know you, you get to know me, I will buy you a cup of coffee. 
you just let me know when uh, when you're available and when I'm available and we'll figure it out and we'll meet up. Um, so there's a website, coffeewithdavid.com. On there, you can uh, fill out like a quick little survey and form and tell me more about yourself. And then uh, I'll get back to you and we can find a way to interact and connect. Yeah, well, if you if you want to chat with me afterwards, I'd definitely be. the The question was, he's he's building a crowdfunding platform uh, platform that has an equity aspect to it. Um, okay, pre built uh, and looking to. Uh, you can't offer loyalty programs for buy one get one free that type of stuff in in the crowdfunding space. Uh, but looking to find a way to increase loyalty uh, and offer some sort of gamified. Uh, option for that. And so one, if you talk to me afterwards, we can exchange info and I'd be happy to like sit down and chat about it. Um, but one way that you could go about that again is is catering to the different types of, of players or different types of motivations that people have. So one thing that I could think of off the top of my head would be this again, <laughs> badges and achievements, but this idea that as you interact with the site, as you pledge and as you um, continue to pledge with multiple campaigns and support the community as a whole, you not only get uh, the congrats, you just successfully funded your, your fifth campaign, but you could also use that as a way to play to the killer, the, the fame-seeking aspect of these people are helping support the community uh, to a degree that uh, that most people aren't. It, it could also be finding an interesting way to uh, work with the interface or the experience that people have when they go to the website. Tinder, uh, they actually talked about it at the earlier panel that we had earlier, but it turned dating into more of a game than it already was, right? By, by <laughs> I mean, you know, everybody puts on a face and whatever. Um, but but by, by creating an app that, that made it very fun and interesting and the user interface was very unique, you were able to kind of make this almost addicting, very enjoyable way to, uh, to meet new people and, and to find new possible mates. Um, and so in the same way, there might be some opportunity there where by building in aspects of user interface design or tweaking the way that people experience your your platform, you can add aspects of gaming to that to uh, to make it more enjoyable. So I, I would love to chat about it as well as there's there's some really great uh, developer groups in the area um, that um, that have developers and game developers that are looking for opportunities and bringing in people who have a background in gaming and a background in that development can be a really great way to kind of mix it up and, and, and find new perspectives you may never have thought of in the first place. So, um, yeah, so five minutes. Yeah, so, so the question was, uh, do you see chatting apps similar to Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp or these other apps where it's very social based and it's very interaction based? Do you see a, um, a way that people are going to gamify that or, or add gaming elements to that down the road? Um, I, I think it would be interesting, right? As technology continues to change and as new technology comes out and, and continues to innovate on what's already been there, there is definitely a need for apps and companies in general to change with the times and to evolve their product 
Um, and so even though WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger are doing well so far um, and, and have a platform that people continue to use and enjoy using, um, there, there may be a possibility that down the road, chatting with new people or reconnecting and interacting with other people might be something new. What if, what if WhatsApp um, added functionality so that not only do you chat and interact with people, but you, because they're contacts of yours, because they have other contact information and things like that, what if there was an aspect that incentivized you or incentivized them to share more contact information with you? Now, maybe, maybe not address or maybe not this thing or that thing, but find a way that by connecting through social media, there's incentives or there's, there's additional aspects that you can get only through those social platforms. It's, but, but again, I think that the thing is, is that um, gamification and adding gaming elements can, can be very fun and unique and engaging. But the other question is, is what is the purpose of adding that gaming element? Now, I love games. I love, I love all of these types of things. But I would not say that everything has to have a gaming element. The chairs that you're sitting on, unless there's a reason for it, don't need a game controller built into them if we're trying to produce them for $5 a pop and we're using them for these types of interactions. However, when you're at the UN and you need to have automatic translation and you need people to be able to vote on things, having chairs that have additional technology and additional uh, aspects to them might be important or might be interesting. So really, what is, what is the purpose behind wanting to add gaming elements or what is the purpose, the, the thing that you're seeking that you're trying to find and, and how can gaming possibly add benefit to your users, your employees, your yourself personally, um, in a way that it's currently not being seen. Um, I think that's really the the way to look at it. So. Do you have any? Uh, I mean, gamification is kind of a big new market. Yeah. Are there any resources or environments or realities where where some states don't allow uh, private gaming equipment? Yeah. Um, Okay, so the question was about legality of certain aspects of gamification and uh, possible resources for that information. Um, I, I currently don't know from the legal side uh, of any websites that say, this is your state, this is how they offer incentiv uh, incentivized marketing or rewards-based programs or anything like that. Um, and I think it also depends on the market that you're in. But I think that one of, the, one of the things that I try to do to stay on top of it, um, as well as um, find out more information about everything, is by listening to thought leaders and, and following the, the trends on, on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or whatever it is. Um, and so, Again, one is possibly, if, if you're looking from the development side of things, if you're looking from uh, opportunities in that path, it's by connecting with other game developers and other people that are in the, the gamification space. Um, and, uh, and, sorry, I just, I lost it for a second. Um, but, but so I think that, again, connecting, connecting with people who are doing that, um, as, as well as I will, I will try and share a couple resources, again, um, in, that, in that description on AllCal, as well as if you connect with me and shoot me a message, uh, I can definitely reply and send you that information. Um, but I'll go out and I'll, I'll search to see if there's some really good forums out there for gamification, especially for people that are maybe not in the industry, that are not actively making games or actively doing game development, but are instead interested in being a part of the discussion or at least learning from what's being put out there and, and the new things that are happening. So I'll definitely share that. So the question was about gamification of e-commerce uh, and, and including 
including aspects of gaming to increase sales and to increase return of customers and, and sales and things like that. Um, I think that uh, there, there have been some really interesting things. So Steam, it's actually non-traditional e-commerce, uh, but Steam is a game. And what are we doing on time? Basically, OK. Um, but so uh, Steam is a, is a game store. Uh, it's an online gaming uh, marketplace, that's the word, that allows you to buy games directly through your computer. You don't have to go to the store and buy CDs, if anybody does that anymore. Um, and you can download games directly to your computer and play them. Uh, they have aspects of community, of that socializer interaction, where not only can you review and comment on games and leave your information, but you can recommend them to friends. Um, you can create lists. So I can go in and create a list of my top 10 games that I think anyone should play. And anybody that wants to interact with me can go in and interact with that. Um, they also have been testing out some new uh, things where they do a, an entire sale throughout a week or a weekend where they do a sale of new games or of certain brands of games. And they turn it into a game where the more that people buy, the, the higher tiers they unlock and the deeper discounts they unlock. So it's, it's almost a, a crowd, uh, a hive mind effect where people get really excited and they're like, oh my gosh, we're that much closer to unlocking a free copy of Age of Empires. Let's, you know, I'm going to go buy one more game or two more games. And, and they have little games that they actually, mini games that they add as well. So while you're on Steam, you can go play mini games. And by beating levels of mini games, you unlock different tiers of those sales as well. And, and I think Steam is one of the best case studies and examples of how to do sales, how to do any sort of e-commerce, because it's they rake in money. It's ridiculous how, how successful they've been uh, and, and the new kind of fun opportunities that they do. Um, but so, so that, that could be one way. Uh, as well as even uh, recently, they did a thing called Rewards. Reward Style is a local company. Uh, but they connect with fashion bloggers and with uh, people who share and blog about fashion and clothing and all that kind of stuff. And they have created incentives and things like that for the influencers themselves to share and to interact with people and to help sell clothing, basically. So that's one way that uh, connecting with influencers as well as incorporating some of those things. Steam is a really good case sample, case study. So thank you, guys. Uh, this is the end of the panel. The next panel that's going to be in here, do you know what it is? You should check it out. Uh, should be good. Um, there's also, for, for people that are interested in development, uh, there's a panel that's happening at 4. I don't know where it's at, but it's, it's about app development and developing your first app. Nick Culbertson, the guy that's going to be uh, leading it and presenting, he does a really great job. He's the moderator, the organizer of the Dallas App Developers Group. Um, and it's on, it's on the second floor. Uh, so you can take the elevator to the second floor. And it's around in room 2, I think it is. So. Uh, again, thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Oh, awesome. Cool. So.